edgy, nervous, mm. all them things you'd expect. It's a semi-final, you know, and a lot of things are going to change between the opening 30 minutes once you get to, you know, 70 minutes, 80 minutes. And I think England grew. Mm. We were a far better team in the second half. Um, look, big moments. I, I, I never, I could never say that that is a pen. To me, that was like, Wow. You know, but then I'm used to penalties. I've spoken at penalties at length over the years about how easily they're given. Um, it was, and you know, it was a it was such a close game that I think a lot of people didn't anticipate, including myself, of how much of a fight and how good Denmark were in the game. Mm. But I thought taking Damsgaard off was probably one of the worst decisions by a manager in the tournament. But I didn't it, get that at all. He did make some... I know what you mean, because, again, that was in the stadium. There were questions going, why would you take him off? You know, he's one of your most important players. And also making the substitutions as early as he did. And I know yeah. people were <clears> equally <throat> as critical as Gareth Southgate not making as many substitutions in the 90 minutes. Mm. But obviously it then led to, in the end, Denmark having to play the, the final sort with of half men, of yeah. the extra time, yeah, with 10 men. Well, look, let's... You know, we've talked about this at length. England have got an incredible death in their squad. Okay, mm. now when you utilise them, and I think Gareth's timing obviously was perfect because <laughs> the substitutes for Denmark, substitutes, they weren't even in comparison to no. how good England substitutions could be. So their squad has got them through the tournament. Something that Gareth has always talked about that everybody involved is going to play their part and is going to be needed. And that proved to be true. You know, England's substitutions, Henderson come on, I thought it made a massive difference to England in midfield, added far more, was winning, biting tackles, making the play starting from him. And I, I thought he added to what, you know, Rice had been tremendous all tournament, uh, but I thought he ran out of gas towards the end of the, the, the second half. Mm. And right, you know, look, some of these lads are just covering every blade of glass, uh, grass, and he, he certainly done that. And it's not only that. Maybe you can shed a bit more light into this because you know what it's like to play at these major tournaments. But the mental side of it, in mm. terms of playing in, an, in a huge game, now, obviously, with England trying to get to a final that they've not done for, since 1966 in that famous World Cup, how much does that play on your mind as a player? Can you block it out or is it impossible to do that? No, not really. It's in your face every second of every day. <laughs> yeah. There's, you know, once, even if you go to room and relax, just trying to, you know, we were told we couldn't receive phone calls mm -hmm. from the reception, uh, you know, because people would phone in and you'd meet people and you'd, you just, it was generally in your face and switching off time was very, very difficult. Now, I don't know how, what Gareth would do. I would hope that he'd suggest don't get on your phones and don't, you know, because you end up, Going for all your messages, mm. have a bit of time. Yeah, if you have half hour or so, that's fine, or an hour max. But just try and stay away from social media. Try and stay away with doing too many interviews. Yes, you're going to speak to your family, but you've got family, you've got friends, you know. I mean, I, I one of the funniest things I can remember is with the ticket scenario in America. Yeah. The tickets used to drive all the players mad. Yeah. Because you were getting, you know, getting them there and then you couldn't get, you know, all of them together. And, you know, just all things that were happening behind the scenes you would have no S idea stuff about. Stuff that you don't actually want to be worrying about, yeah, but exactly. you're suddenly burdened with, yeah. Yeah, well, all the players would be laughing about but you generally, I think, I found the real time to relax was breakfast, lunch and dinner <laughs> because we all sat down, there'll be conversation, there'll be laughter and we'd all be switched off from what was happening in the, uh, mm. on the outside world. And I found them times were the times we really grew together as players and as a squad and via the manager and we'd have a you know game of Trivial Pursuit and it'd be the players against the staff and all these things that sort of got you away from thinking about the match because, look, well, I was speaking this morning, you know, some people are nervous now. They woke up nervous <laughs> about the game and they're a fan watching. Mm. So, you know, imagine what a player is going to be like. It's it's in your face every second. So. Which is which is why it's so nice to see these these pictures and the, the footage that we're seeing of the players enjoying time in the pool and yeah. now we know all about these unicorn inflatables that they're all enjoying as well. Uh, but it's so important to have that sort of downtime but in the sense of hoping that gives you that switch off that everyone needs when there's so much pressure put upon you. Yeah, and, and Gareth is he's perfectly placed. Look, he's... And we'll probably talk a lot about this over the weekend but Gareth has done a lot of planning towards getting England into this position. This isn't just, you know, one thing. There's not You can't identify one thing he's done right. It's very complex and there's many things you need to get in place. And one of them is 
the handling of a group in a major tournament. It's not easy. Sometimes it's rocky. Sometimes you get clicks. Sometimes you get like the French can do, implode within a squad. You know, things can de- develop. You just, so you're, you've got to be prepared for all these challenges. But he also selected, which is quite clear, a fantastic group with an incredible mentality. Mm. That is clear as night and day mm. to me. And whilst England will be going through all of this sort of oh, maybe emotional roller coaster, we should say, the Italians will be doing exactly the same. Exactly. And see how relaxed they were for the, uh, the uh, penalty shootout. Yeah. No. Chiellini was just smiling <laughs> and, you know, it was a penalty shootout for the make the Euros final. And he was, I mean, look, he's an experienced pro. Yeah. He's seen it all. He's been at Juve for a number of years. But boy, did he uh, sort of take it down a notch, you know, around the penalty shootout. Mm. And they got through. They did. And look, there, there is so much build up on the way here on Talk Sport. So this is the station for you to uh, listen in and get ready for what is a hugely important game. Game Day Breakfast with Natalie Sawyer and Tony Cascarino. Saturday mornings from 6 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.